Polluted Wastelands 2 is one of TDS's hardest game modes. Because of that, I thought it'd be interesting to try and beat it while getting randomized towers from this wheel and only giving myself one free respin. Am I going to be able to win or is my luck going to be too bad? Before I continue, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Hair Mafia. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to talk to me, suggest videos, or maybe even be in one, consider joining the Blue Head Mafia Discord. It's a great time, and I hope to see you there. With that said, let's get started. Oh my god, bro. Come on. Okay, that's not bad. No way. Oh, let's go. Dude, the farm is going to make it so much easier. Okay, it's the last one. Not going to lie, my team is not looking good right now. Yes, that's actually so good. Okay, so our final loadout is a commando, shotgunner, demo man, arm, and golden minigunner. I'm not going to lie, I think I got really lucky with this one. Because Polluted Wastelands 2 is one of the hardest game modes available, I knew I wasn't going to get very far on my own. I decided to ask my Discord for help and ended up getting three other people, that being Gug, Void Queen, and Below Cautious. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. For the first wave, we each placed on one shotgunner, getting four in total. Out of any town my loadout, the shotgunner is probably the best option for early game. These shotgunners were able to survive a couple of waves by themselves, we started the farm. Farming was going to be incredibly important, as we had to make sure we had enough cash to deal with the difficult waves to come. These shotgunners were able to defend all the way up to wave 7, which is the first wave that has hazards. Hazards are a huge bottleneck, as they have a lot of HP and a pretty fast movement speed. We almost leaked, fortunately we were able to survive by just getting a couple more shotgunners. After that, we were able to continue farming. However, we had to make sure we prepare for wave 10, which is the first wave of a boss. The mutated boss has a whopping 500 health, which means it's a huge problem to deal with. We upgraded our shotgunners to level 2, and fortunately, this added damage was enough to deal with the boss. Our next threat came on wave 13, Shadows. Shadows are a special type of enemy that can only be hit by certain towers. Fortunately, the level 2 shotgunner has hidden detection, so this wasn't very difficult to deal with. Wave 15 wasn't an issue either, and on this wave, we got our first golden minigunner. The golden minigunner is essentially going to make up the majority of our DPS. It is by far the highest max DPS out of any of our towers, and it has no placement limit, meaning our plan was pretty much just to spam as many golden minigunners as possible. The next 5 waves were relatively easy, and I managed to get 8 level 3 farms by wave 17. Level 3 farms are the most efficient level of farm, but there wasn't really any need to upgrade my farms past this point. But, on wave 20, we face our first wave of Toxics. Toxics are a huge threat, as they have 300 health and a very fast movement speed. Not only that, when a Toxic is killed, they form a Toxic Puddle on the ground. This puddle can heal any enemies that step foot on it, which can become a huge issue if you're dealing with any high health bosses. In preparation, I managed to get 3 level 2 Golden Minigunners, and this combined with my teammates Golden Minigunners was thankfully enough to handle these Toxics, as well as the ones on wave 21. On wave 22, we faced the Amalgamation, a boss with 8000 health and can spawn Fleshlings when damaged. These fleshlings have 160 health and can easily overwhelm your towers. The boss slowly but surely made its way across the map, and despite us selling and replacing our minigunners, we could not beat it. Despite us being pretty close, we knew we'd have to change something if we wanted to win. When we were placing down our golden minigunners, we kind of just spammed them and upgraded them randomly. While this may not seem important, it was actually wasting our cash. The max level golden minigunner is the level with the best value, so if we instead tried to max out each minigunner one by one, we would overall end up with more DPS. With this in mind, we queued up for another attempt. We played the early game pretty much the same, getting 4 shotgunners for the first 10 waves, level 2 shotgunners for the boss, and golden minigunners for the toxics. But this time, instead of spamming minigunners, we focused on maxing out one at a time. This gave us more DPS, and actually let us beat the amalgamation on wave 22. After this, things went pretty well, and we kept placing more and more golden minigunners. But what we didn't realize, is that things were about to get really difficult. Wave 28 is one of the hardest waves in this game mode, mainly due to one enemy, Rushers. These guys have a whopping 1000 HP and a 1400 HP shield. They are ridiculously fast, but slow down once you break their shield. We placed as many golden minigunners as we could, but we weren't even close to beating them. While we could have just tried again, I think it's about time that I use my respin. If I can manage to get something good, I might actually be able to beat this wave. Okay, I think that works. While it's not amazing, I had a feeling that the warden might actually be pretty helpful, considering that the enemies we died to were really fast. So, with our new tower, we queued up for our last attempt. When we eventually got back to wave 28, we had now scattered a bunch of wardens across the map. 
Our plan was basically to try and stun the rushers as much as possible to give our other towers more time to attack them. While it was really close, this actually worked and the warden ended up making a huge difference. However, right after we healed the rushers, a horde of circuits came out along with a bunch of amalgamations. Circuits are a unique kind of enemy that's able to speed up enemies surrounding it. This can become a huge issue, especially when paired up with bulky enemies like the amalgamation. But just like with the rushers, the warden was able to stun them and give our towers enough time to kill them. Despite the fact that we beat this wave, that doesn't mean that things got much easier. On wave 30 came another difficult boss, the Abomination. The Abomination has 20,000 health, is incredibly fast, and even after you kill it, it can revive itself and goes even faster. But even though it was really fast, our wardens were able to stun it and we were able to kill it. As the waves progressed, things got more and more difficult as the waves got more packed with enemies. And on wave 35, we ended up losing to the insane amount of amalgamations. Overall, I think we did pretty good. However, it's unfortunate that we didn't make it to the final wave. If you know of any ways you could have gone in further, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try my best to respond. Before I end the video, I'd like to thank Yord, Seacoon, The Figure, Adam, Elixir US, The Pirate Bay, and John Joe 684 for supporting my content by becoming a channel member. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, like being my friend on Roblox, consider becoming a channel member today. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the blue head mafia my name is corso and i'll see y'all in the next video